So today we're going to talk about set notation and interval notation. So here we have an interval of solutions to some equation or inequality. Uh, so there's a couple ways that we can write this interval. So we can use inequalities, uh, the traditional inequalities that we've learned back in algebra, or we can use interval notation, which is prominently used in calculus. So if we wanted to define this interval using inequalities, we would say the set of x such that. Now, they're going to be um, less than or equal to because these endpoints are included. And then you just put the outer bounds of your interval. So this would be the set notation. And typically, we would write it actually in like this. So it would be the, re the way this is read is the set of all x, and then this vertical line means such that um, x is between negative 3 and 1. Or we could read it as the set of all x such that negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. Now, that's the first way that we have learned this, and we learned this back in algebra. But we can also talk about this using interval notation. So using interval notation, we actually can signify this without all of this, uh, these inequality signs and really more simply sort of looking like an ordered pair. Um, so the way that we do that is we first recognize that if we have a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to symbol, we use brackets. We use brackets to signify that the endpoints are being included in our interval. If we're using just a strictly less than or a strictly greater than symbol, then we use parentheses, meaning that the endpoints are not included in our solution set. So if we have this here, we see that both of these endpoints are included. So that means we're going to use brackets for the endpoints of our intervals. And then just like what uh, we did here, we signify what is the ending points of this interval. So we're going from negative three to one. So the uh, interval notation for this would be a bracket, negative three comma one. So we're starting our interval at negative three, we're ending it at, ne at positive one, and these brackets tell us that the endpoints of our interval is included. So when both endpoints are included like this, we call this interval, a closed interval. It's a closed interval. Okay, so let's look at another example. So here we have, uh, we're going from negative one to two and all the values in between negative one and two are included in our solution set, but negative one is not and two is not. So if we wanted to write the interval notation, or sorry, the set notation for this, it would be the set of all x such that um, x is in between negative 1 and 2. Negative 1 is less than, so it's strictly less than this time because we're not equaling it here. So less than x is less than 2. So this would be our uh, set notation. So for the interval notation, since negative one is not included in the endpoint, we would use parentheses there. Since the two is not included, again, we would use parentheses. And just like we did here, we look at where does it start and where does that interval end? So it would be from negative one to two, and we would be using parentheses. Um, this looks like an ordered pair, but it's signifying an interval. And when both ends are not included, we call this an open interval. So this is an open interval.